Colorado's roster is full of new faces again. Who's going to break out? I think DJ McKinney could be one, and I have a couple more. You are Locked on Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borba. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. We are also brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in, making me your first listen of the day. Like I said, free and available wherever you get your podcast. So make sure to like, subscribe, and follow my everydayers. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and just making me a part of your daily routine and always giving me support. Let's talk about the breakout stars for Colorado in 2024. Last year, I gave you guys a few. The one that I remember standing out the most that I was absolutely right on was Xavier Weaver, the USF transfer that I think a lot of people weren't getting giving enough credit to because I think there was a lot of buzz, and rightfully so, around Jimmy Horn, who had come in early. He was there during the spring, and he was the first guy to earn his number uh, of the Coach Prime era. He was sort of the everyone was talking about him type of guy, right? And then all of a sudden, they land Xavier Weaver. I'm like, okay. Jimmy Horn's great. He really is. But Xavier Weaver brings a new element. And so I'm going to do my best to pinpoint three players who I think may have already had solid seasons before, but are going to break out in 2024. Starting with DJ McKinney, the Oklahoma State transfer, he already has Big 12 experience. So nothing that Colorado is going to see this year is going to be new to him, right? He's already played against some of these teams. He might be familiar with some of these schemes, some of these receivers, some of these quarterbacks. So that helps, right? You look at his overall PFF grade from last season, graded out as a 68.8. Nothing special there. Uh, Run defense, not great. 59.6. He's a corner, so it's not expected for him to be a super duper impact player on the run, the rush defense. You'd like to see him have a little bit of a ability to do that, but 70.3 coverage grade, right? And I think, he played, he was solid, right, for Oklahoma State. Played a lot of quality snaps for them. Can move all over. Played some slot, played wide, um, played in the box. He, he he literally played all, he lined up all, all over, excuse me, for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. And so I think he offers Colorado a lot of experience, for one, is important, right? You want to have guys who you could trust, who are battle-tested. You don't want to just throw out these youngsters that, aren't ready for the moment because then when the moment gets too big, they panic. It can kind of like, they can kind of hurt their confidence in a way. And we don't, you don't want that, right? We don't, we don't want them to sort of feel like, Oh, I lost my confidence. I lost my swagger because I just, I was put into a situation where I didn't, I didn't succeed or whatever, but he had 24, uh, excuse me, 38 total tackles. And, Five pass deflections last year. Sorry, if you see me keep cutting up, I've got a nasty cough. It's making it really hard to soldier through and talk through this. So I'm going to be drinking a lot of water, taking a lot, little cough breaks here and there. But DJ McKinney, five pass deflections, offers, like I said, experience six foot two, 190 pounds. He has size. And Coach Prime is really high on him. He says he's a first round talent. And I think. One, getting that sort of praise from Deion Sanders is a big deal for anyone. But one, a corner, that's a, that's as big a deal as it gets. Deion Sanders is the best corner to ever play the game. And he's telling you, hey, you have first-round potential, and we're going to help you get there. So he's been working with Deion Sanders. He's been working with Robert Livingston. You have to love what he brings to the table. I think him, along with Travis Hunter and Preston Hodge, I think – by the end of the year, there's a possibility where it's like Colorado may have the best corner trio in the country. Like I think Preston Hodge was prob- would probably be the top one or two corners at every program in the country. DJ McKinney would probably be top two or three pro- corners at every program in the country. And Travis Hunter would be the best corner at every program in the country. So you have guys that could be the best corner at most programs all in one secondary, all in one team. And so – I think with another year of experience under his belt, with more tutelage, uh, 
on his craft, more work on his craft. DJ McKinney is someone to look out for. Next, we're going to go to the offensive side of the ball. Um, I'm going to go to the running back position, mostly because Colorado didn't get a lot from this position last year. Now, a lot of this was because they couldn't run the ball. Their offensive line was terrible. Uh, they just kind of – the offensive line just really – subtracted like say a playbook is 500 plays we'll just pretend that way we have a nice visual here 500 plays 250 of them are run plays 250 of them are pass plays so as so that's half and half right so we got a bunch of looks here uh in the run we got a bunch of looks here in the pass when you can't run the ball when you are as ineffective at running the ball as colorado is it goes from 250 run plays to about 10, maybe 30, and then less pass plays because you have no play action. You have no – the RPO is not really an RPO. It's just like, a, hey, we're going to give you more time to get to the quarterback because, one, our offensive line can't block, and, two, we have no run game, so there's no point in doing this. That's where Colorado was at last year. They had no run game. They had no play action pass game. And they know they really had no use for the RPO stuff because it was like, what is there is no run pass option. It is a pass only option. Now, a lot of people who don't follow Colorado or don't really follow what Deion Sanders did at Jackson State are gonna say, Well, of course he didn't run the ball. He wants Shador Sanders to get all the yards and all the accolades. No, that's not the case. Look at Stevion Wilkerson's numbers at Jackson State. That dude was a bell cow. He was I think he rushed for, I think he had over 200 carries this past year, or two years ago now at Jackson State. So Colorado wants to run the ball, or they will run and run the ball if they can. And I think they will be able to. And Dallin Hayden, running back from Ohio State, transfers in with about 670 yards rushing on his career. Um, had a big impact, I would say, his freshman year. Rushed for 533 yards. Um, had two massive games, one of them against Indiana, rushed for 102 yards, and then one against Maryland, which they blew out Indiana. But Maryland, that game, they only won by 13 points, and he rushed for 146 yards, three touchdowns, right? And then he didn't play a lot last year because obviously they had uh, a nice little duo there, and he kind of just seemed to get lost in the fold. But he did play a lot against Purdue, 11 carries, 76 yards. He never really got a chance to be a featured back. And right now, this is his chance to be the featured back. I think the running back room for Colorado is very much up for grabs. I think the last I saw Charlie offered all was a lead back, and I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, if it is, good for Charlie. Uh, maybe he should be the breakout guy then. But I do think that this is Dallin Hayden's job to lose, and there's a lot of excitement around him. Like I feel like there was around Alton McCaskill before we knew that he was injured and probably never going to play a down of football for Colorado football. So that was unfortunate. Um, but Dallin Hayden offers speed, power, um, sort of this mentality of not being able to bring him down. And I think Colorado needs a dog like that in the run game, in the backfield. Okay? So those are my first two. My third one, and it's a little bit of an iffy one. It feels like not like a cop-out because he's he was already sort of established, but he wasn't established as much at the Power 5 level, so I'm still going to roll with it. And so, and this is quite odd for me because I feel like I've been quite critical of this unit, but Mikai Hill-Green, linebacker transfer from Charlotte, he had a, a defensive grade of a 70, 64.4 rush grade, 77.1 pass grade, and then a 76 coverage grade, which... By all means, very good. So he could do a little bit of everything. He could cover. He could get to the quarterback, which is a pretty big deal. Because obviously, if you can't get to the quarterback in today's era of football, good luck. Because all of these quarterbacks are mobile. They all are a, they're much better passers than I think they were in past decades or past eras, if you will. Um, but to sort of look at his stats, stats to dissect him, uh, this past year, he had a career-high 73 total tackles, three pass deflections, two sacks, and a fourth fumble. And his two years at Michigan, which he didn't play in 2020, he had one total tackle. He had 50 total tackles, and then he ended up opting to leave the program. 
And I think he's going to be a team leader. I think he's going to be a breakout in the sense of he's going to be a leader for this team vocally. And I think he's going to lead by example. I think this linebacker group as a whole is viewed as quite weak by most people, myself included. And I think if there's anyone that's going to prove us wrong about that, it's going to be Nikai Hill Green. He could, he's agile. He can move all over the field. And Colorado needs a playmaker back there. And I think having him, Trevor Woods, Levante Bentley, Johnny, um, excuse me, I'm drawing a blank right now. Jo- Johnny Cheney, excuse me, I could not think of his last name for the life of me. Sorry, Sick, sickness brain, you know. Uh, Johnny Cheney, they they have some interesting pieces. We just need to see them come together. And I think if there's going to be a guy that put, helps them put it together, it's going to be Nakai Hill Green. You guys comment below. Which one of the transfers or freshmen do you think will have a breakout season in 2024 for Colorado? When we come back, we're going to be talking about the latest sort of odd update on Shiloh Sanders. But first, a word from our sponsors over at Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket make marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Myself and my girlfriend, we're going to Atlanta this weekend. We're like, hey, let's catch a Braves game. Where do we go to get our tickets for the best prices? Game time, of course. Not only did we get to see which deals were the best deals, but we also got to see the views from our seats. So we'll be behind home plate, and we got them for a really great price, a steal, if you will. Um, so save up to 60% off buying last-minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, and theater near you. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Welcome back to Locked On Buffs. I appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day, making me your first listen of the day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in every day, my everydayers. You know who you are. You guys tune in, you like, you subscribe, you follow. Make sure to follow the account. This would not be possible without you. We are talking about Shiloh Sanders. And I wanted to give you guys a timeline because I remember how controversial this was when it was reported. And now it's getting interesting, to say the least. So, if you guys don't remember... Back in May, I believe it was. Let me confirm with my story here. Yes. It was reported back in May that Shiloh had shoulder surgery and could miss up to six months. Shiloh then, at Big 12 Media Day, said, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm not missing anything. I don't know who wrote that. And then, during fall camp, we see him in a yellow non-contact practice jersey. Now, a lot of people are like, he's doing. they're doing that because he's old. They're doing that because they don't want him to get injured anymore, or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all these reasons, right? Someone asked Robert Livingston why Shiloh Sanders was in a yellow sort of jersey and why, what his status was. And Livingston said, which this is a new defense coordinator, it's above my pay grade. You're going to have to have to ask the head coach and he said, yeah, we're in a good spot there. So it's like, okay, what is going on here? Because let's pull out the handy-dandy calendar. If we go back to May, six months would be, not counting May, it'd be June, July, August, September, October, November, which I'm, we'll, we'll count May. We'll assume it's early May. So May, June, July, August, September, October would be the return of Shiloh, maybe, if this injury come or if that diagnosis was true. Now we don't know the extent of the injury. We didn't know the the report was quickly denied. So that's interesting. But something is up. You have to think that they're protecting Shiloh from something, whether it was that a surgery that serious or not. But for Robert Livingston to not be like, hey, he's fine. It's just precautionary. Or, hey, he's fine. It's just he got banged up here or there. Something's up here. And I don't want to speculate that Shadow Sanders is injured because I don't have all the information. But 
I'll talk about it from this perspective. Missing out, if Shiloh Sanders has to miss any games this year, that would be tough for Colorado. He's a vocal leader. He's a leader by example. Led the team in tackles last year. He's the, the CEO, the headache gang CEO. Dude's the hardest hitter on the team. Forces fumbles, makes big plays. And just losing that, that'd be tough for that secondary. Now, they did bring in a guy from Vanderbilt, Miami, and Savion Riley, who is experienced, can make plays. But you don't, Shiloh, Shiloh Sanders is like the heart and soul of the defense, right? I think Tra- Travis, Hunter, Travis Hunter, excuse me, easily the star of the defense. But I think but Chase Shiloh is the heart, the soul of the defense. And not having him on the field would be a detrimental loss to this team. Now, obviously, We'll just have to wait a few more weeks to see what happens, but it is something to look out for, and I will keep you guys updated uh, the more I learn. When we come back, people are upset about Colorado again. Shocker. This time about social media. Wow. But first, a word from our sponsors over at eBay Motors. This episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by our sponsors over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to Locked on Buffs. It's Kevin Borber here. Appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day and making me your first listen of the day. My every day is you know who you are. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Make sure to comment, like, spam the comment section with your hottest takes. I love them. Let's talk about the latest drama surrounding Colorado. It's ridiculous, but it's drama. Apparently, people just now discovered that Colorado puts their social media handles on the back of their jerseys for uh, practice, right? They did it last year, I know. Um, I'm pretty sure Deion Sanders did it at Jackson State, and now people are saying, hey, you copied UCF, blah, 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 or people are saying Colorado's not focused on football, blah, blah, blah. And let me tell you, this is the biggest non-story, arguably, in college football history. Like, putting social media handles, which for the most part are just the players' names with a number or an at sign in front of it, on the back of their jersey, that's what we're getting worked up about. That's what people are think. Oh, Colorado's not going to win games because they have this. Oh, Colorado's not going to do this because of blah blah blah. That's what we're saying. So those are that was literally one of the things that I saw on social media today. Where I was like, Colorado not focused on football, going to lose games. Why? Because not because, not because they have a tough strength of schedule. Not because they have an inexperienced defense coordinator, not because not because they have sort of a how do I put this? I guess a, a lot of unanswered questions, I guess you could say. They have social media handles on their jerseys, and people are irate about this. Like literally, people are filed up, like literally the top story right now about it says playing for clicks. Um People saying Colorado put their put their players' social media handles on the back of their practice jerseys with the laughing emoji or the little this emoji. And it's like programs do that. Guess what? These guys are brands. They have NIL deals or they're trying to get NIL deals. And what better way to do that? Realistically, too, who cares? It's a practice jersey. It's not like in, instead of their last name on their on their regular jerseys, they went with their social media handles. It's really not a big deal. If you're someone, if you are a loved one, are irritated by this let me tell you it's gonna be okay i promise it will be okay because at the end of the day colorado is gonna do them one we this is what we need to accept colorado is gonna do them what they do is probably not gonna be what most of college football does and that's okay not everyone has to do the same things and so that's my ted talk on that i appreciate you guys for tuning in to lock on bus make me your first listen of the day free and available wherever you get your podcast make sure to like subscribe and follow Share this with a friend. Next couple episodes, 
We have some crossover episodes with some Big 12 foes. And we're going to talk about what they think of Colorado, where they think Colorado fits in the Big 12. It's going to be really cool. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe, share this with a friend. Hope you guys have a great day. Great day.